Though Dylan had professed many times that he would happily bequeath it all, though Dylan had professed many times that he would happily bequeath it all to his brother, he deserved more than to live out his life alone. He was a good man, an extraordinary man. Dylan may be reserved, if not gruff, with others, but he had let her see enough of his soul to know that he would make an excellent father, showering his daughters with love and affection, lavishing attention upon his sons, and guiding them into becoming fine, honorable men. But to get those sons and daughters, he must first take a wife, and Alyssa did not know if she could bear to watch him do so from the shadows. Hila! Starting violently at the sound of that frantic voice shouting through her door, she scattered powder across the table and knocked the remnants of the dried ginger root to the floor. Hila, please, tis urgent! It must be, she thought, shaking off her morose thoughts. Naught else would prompt the superstitious people of the keep to seek her out whilst she reputedly practiced her dark arts. Pulling the cowl up to shield her face and hair, she strode to the thick wooden door and yanked it open. A boy, barely old enough to grow a beard, staggered back a step, breathing heavily. Her heart stopped. Prickles of dread tickled her nape. "'Twas Marcus, Robert's new squire, covered in sweat, grime, and dried blood. "'Speak quickly,' she hissed, if aught had happened to Robert. "'Lord Dylan has been wounded,' he blurted. Shock rippled through her. How badly? Mortally, wise one! Ice filled her lungs, choking off her breath. Mortally? Spinning around, she grabbed a cloth bag and started to rake bandages and assorted containers into it. You will take me to him immediately. See that the fastest mount in my lord's stables is readied for me at once. Nay, wise one, tis too late for that. The bag slipped from her fingers. What? she asked faintly. His voice softened with regret. "'Tis too late. Her knees buckled. Collapsing onto the stool beside her work table, she stared blindly at the floor. Never had she known such despair. Dylan dead? It could not be. Dylan could not be dead. She would have known it. She would have felt something. Why had she not felt something? They were ambushed. Marcus said, daring to venture a step or two inside. Sir Robert and I raced forward as soon as the first shout arose, but Lord Dillon had already been felled. Felled. Sir Robert said twas too well timed. They knew everything. They knew twas not Lord Dillon who left with the bulk of the troops. They knew how few of his guard accompanied him when he left, what route he took. They knew everything. And he was their only target, wise one. Had we not routed them out so swiftly, they would have melted back into the trees without engaging the rest of us. An awful numbness swept through her as she listened, paralyzing her, freezing her insides. She thought that if she were to attempt to move in that instant, her body would shatter into as many pieces as the broken